Hey everybody! Welcome back. Your dreams with your ticket and welcome back. Okay, you get the idea. We're gonna do a Zazel Greed because we can do a Zazel Greed. And uh, I'll show you our seed here, our Zazel seed. ZMCB22NP. This is not the most, uh, oh, what the money and the luck. Do we have two luck and 24 cents from our first room? That's madness. Uh, so, oh my god, we got 30 cents in free money to start this run. Now, no, uh, machine, unfortunately. No reroll machine, I should say. But still, it's pretty solid. Dude, we got a bomb out of it. This is, like, so great to start with. So then we come in here, eh, it's okay. Yeah, it, it probably is aggregate gonna contribute, you know, a decent amount of money over the course of this run, which is important. The whole point is to win greedier mode, and then we unlock uh, Lilith, and I think that's every character except the Lost and the Keeper unlocked, so. Um, and those usually come much later, but for now, look at this. It's this like just every possible role has come to a good head for us here. I'm gonna try it. Two of hearts. That's not what we were looking for, but I figured for five cents it's not a bad deal. So, you know, the, the drill here, essentially every time we can use our wooden nickel, we're going to use our wooden nickel. Now, we can run, like, a pretty easy analysis. Isn't there, like, ten waves on every floor? We'd expect 50% uh, of them to pay out, so five extra cents per floor. And then add in the chance that we could get a nickel out of it. Let's say, like, we're probably going to average six cents per floor just for holding and using this item. It's not a ton. Pardon me, a little congestion there. Uh, it's not a ton. But it's something. Combine that with the chance to maybe get luck upgrades out of it. I think this could have, like, a, a deceptively valuable impact over the course of this entire run. Not quite, you know, Shears level, but, uh, you know, what is in today's modern world? I probably, I don't intend to buy anything else on the rest of this floor. We do have quite a lot of money right off the bat, though. 46 cents. I mean, we don't care about pills, is the thing. Um, and we don't really care about using bombs to find secret rooms. I'd rather just get them for free. We can afford to be a little picky about it, because we know on the next floor, you know, it's not like there's limited supply. On the next floor, we're probably going to be able to... Uh, self-select things that we actually want as a result of the fact that uh, there's more likely to be a reroll machine than not be a reroll machine. Now the problem we had in our last run uh, as a Zazel, we won, but we didn't win as a Zazel. It manifested itself after the deal with the devil, so we probably, no matter what the deal with the devil is, I think we just want to avoid it here. Hopefully we get lucky and it's like a uh, just a regular old, like, Krampus deal or something like that. Just because our HP is bad. So, if it's a truly amazing item... Well, actually, you know what? We've kind of put ourselves in a situation where I just can't take it unless it gives us HP. So, um, you know, something like the Pact would be amazing right now. And we would, we would go for it and probably try to make it work. But uh, anything else we just can't afford without dying, probably. So, I think it is worth our... Uh, it's worth noting we kind of adhered to our, our strategy accidentally. So let's see what we got. It is uh, two items we can't take. Tarot cloth is lovely. I would be I mean I'd be tempted to take the nail honestly too, but they're neither one is uh, is good enough, like literally on an objective level to keep us alive. So we're just gonna bounce instead. Now curse of the blind dangerous especially when we do want to be spending on this floor E. Coli's okay if we can get some invincibility breakfast is like free deal with the devil pickups and I mean I'm glad we have HP so we can do uh, a little of this and a little of uh, this as well and maybe get something paid out sorry buddy he lived uh, I don't think there's any reason not to buy seven cent items come on so let's buy the seven cent item. It's potato peeler. It's not actually terrible, um, but obviously, as you might expect, it's not exactly what we're looking for. I'll keep spending. This is not that bad. To spend six cents to get a, a potential deal with the devil item is completely okay. Nine cents, maybe we're waiting on some HP now instead. Oh, you know what? Just use the two of hearts, which we got for free. 
chaos. Every run, apparently, is now a chaos run in our world. Um, lots of 7 cent items. Very thankful for that. You paid out, you paid out with Book of Shadows. Probably really, really good with E. coli, so let's use Potato Peeler to get this Orbital, which synergizes as well. Grab this. Spelunker's Hat. Sprinkler. Fun item. Potato Peeler's a little better here. Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart? Guppy's Collar? Dude, this was like a 10 out of 10 area already. That's in absurd. We've actually, like, completely changed the, the tone of this run right now. Um, so I am going to preserve my HP by doing this. You know, it'll take us a couple extra waves here, but... Do I need to point out we have Sacred Heart and Mini Brimstone right now? This is, like, 10 out of 10. And this is, again, like, a problem I have with Greed Mode is that it's kind of, like... I don't want to say that every run is the same. But there are, like, some common elements to essentially every Greed Mode run. Um, that compromise its replayability a little bit. We should probably not play it, like, 0% of the time. But you do run into a little bit of the, the same stuff over and over. We might as well just finish this off here, you know? We got so much damage, we can walk into enemies without them uh, being able to do anything to us. Kill them basically just by contacting them. Or coming into contact with them, rather. Um, this is probably pretty close to an unbeatable run at the, the present moment. And for this to happen on a floor with Curse of the Blind is kind of ridiculous, but hey, lucky us. So we got to deal with the Angel. The deal with the Angel has given us uh, HP, which is completely fine, and it's not like we need key pieces. So um, I honestly think we should keep buying 7 cent items as long as they keep presenting them. Cuba Meat's totally fine here. Odd Mushroom is good. Tammy said is actually perhaps even better than Book of Shadows. Book of Belial at least takes us closer to Bookworm. And Sister Maggie was not worth it, really, but... Um, I mean, we should go Tammy's head, right? It's, again, a little a little samey, but kind of so be it. Like, we've created a run that's absurd. And this is good, you know, we can, we can actually get Lilith unlocked. And Lilith is a character, there's Bookworm. Um, Lilith is a character that I have basically, like, never played as willingly. Except for when she first got introduced to the game. Dude, there's some good items in here. Um, so, it might be, uh, might be fun to give ourselves some Lilith runs and, and remind ourselves of what it takes to win as Lilith. Uh, we basically have Guppy. That'll be our first pick up there, unless we just got it right there. Um, but... I'd like to get all of the items that are on display. As you might expect, that might not be plausible, but... So we basically traded uh, a, a synergy that was amazingly good against enemies for a synergy that's amazingly good against bosses or single-target foes, whatever you want to call them. It was a little silly of me there. And I, I... If I'm being real with you, I sort of regret it here. Because we had uh, an almost guarantee that we were never going to get hit previously. That's gone away. In favor of a synergy that we've seen many times. But, yet, like, Tammy's head brimstone is, like, one of the immutable laws of Isaac. Like, if you see it, you take it. Especially if you can get Guppy out of it. And the Shears is also amazing. This, you know, is in the running for, I think, best... Uh, Best chaos I've ever had. Especially considering, again, I got chaos accidentally um, as a result of Curse of the Blind. Like, it's 10 out of 10. But yet, yeah, meanwhile, I said, eh, maybe Monster Man... I mean, I'm getting bitter at this point, but... You know, I remember I was like, maybe Monster Man well should be a little bit better. Like, allow you to use it once per room. And people were like, nah, it would make greed mode too easy. Okay, but chaos allows you to become guppy on the second floor every single... Yeah, but that's different in some arbitrary way that I can't represent because you're using me as a straw man right now, which is not really productive, NL. You're really being overly reductive with respect to the entire situation. You know what? I respect that. I should have met you on the playing field as equals instead of taking an air of superiority right off the bat. That's a bad habit and I apologize. No problem, okay? Everybody does it from time to time as a shorthand to make their argument seem better than it actually is. You know what? It's been a pleasure talking to you. That's because I am you. What? Tyler Durden. Fight Club 2. We just wrote it. Fund it. 
I... I think I have a least favorite genre of movie, and it's taken me a while to realize it. Um, but... I watched Zoolander 2, you know... Six months ago? Something like that? I hated it. I like Zoolander 1. I didn't love it, but I was like, this is like a six and a half, seven. I'm okay with that. Um, I, and I, I know you're gonna say you weren't there when it. I saw it in theaters when it released. Okay. Do we need anything here? Is there a reroll machine? There is a reroll machine. Um, I saw Zoolander 2. I thought it was one of the worst movies I've ever seen, bar none. I thought it was horrible. I hated almost every second of it. We already have homing tears. Uh, I think this is like five cents well spent. And then, uh, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, I think that's worth it. I, I'm not, oh, we need that. And then maybe just start saving at this point. Uh, I, we, we got HBO Go, or HBO Canada recently, so we could watch Game of Thrones. And, uh, that came with, in, in Canada, came with the movie network as a, as a way to justify the absurd price point. We're basically paying, like, four dollars a week to watch one television show um it's a little too far but anyway we buying anything else in here so i i like to put on like mindless stuff in the background while i'm doing uh programming so i just put on the movie network last night and i watched uh live free or die hard which i haven't seen since 2007 and i was like this movie is like absolutely just okay <laughs> should you see live free uh or die hard is it on how, how frictionless is the uh, ability for you to watch it? Dude, we gotta check out a new trinket. Ha ha ha. What a, what a coincidence. Um, I can't even tell you what it's a coincidence for because it would be a spoiler. So, we're, um, if, if, you, if it's on and you don't have to do much effort to watch it, psh, why not, dude? Why not? Give it a shot. So, check this out. I'm gonna try this on for size. We're gonna open that. Yeah, I don't really like butter as an item, so we're gonna use our rerolls here. Get a bomb, and a one makes you larger pill. Not what we're looking for. So let's, let's just save our money. We're actually in a great spot. We might want to check this just because we can, without being in a bad place. Um, and I guess we'll go to our secret room as well and hope that it's not a... Wow, that was close. Not an eternal heart. Uh, after Live Free and Die Hard, Bad Santa 2 was on. I watched it, and it was like, I hated it actually even more so than Zoolander 2 which there were some moments in it where I was like this has a good heart Bad Santa 2 see Bad Santa 1 which you know hereafter referred to as Bad Santa is a movie about a deplorable human being who has he, he, by the end of that movie he's come to appreciate family in his own unique and, and messed up way Bad Santa 2 is just like you know, a bunch of Hollywood executives got in the room and were like, what if the worst human being on planet Earth was surrounded by the other worst human beings on planet Earth for like 90 minutes? It's unfathomably cynical and just... The the whole movie is just one-liners. Like, hey, want to go get some lunch? Ah, your vagina smells like an old tuna can. And then you're like, cue laugh track. And it's like, it's just... It's just heinous, cynical filmmaking, so I think my least favorite genre of movie right now is, like, nostalgic sequels. I actually, like, I kind of like Bad Santa 1, which is not a, a controversial opinion. There's a reason it got a sequel, you know, 15 years after the original came out. The Bad Santa 2 made me want to die. Dude, it's just, like, the worst thing. It didn't make me want to die. That's too far. But I'll, I'll spend three cents on this. That's okay. We still got to beat Greed. So, eh, might have worked out. The talent that they have in that movie is absurd. Kathy Bates. I believe she has an Oscar. I'm not going to begrudge her being in Bad Santa 2 because, you know... Essentially, if, if you wanted to know how I would be in Hollywood... I would sell out in a heartbeat. You know, everyone thinks when they go to Hollywood, they would be, if, if they were an actor or an actress, they'd be like, I'm Tilda Swinton. I only take amazing 10 out of 10 roles. Yeah, well, there's like eight Tilda Swins on planet Earth. There's Tilda Swinton, Kate Blanchett. I'm not convinced yet that they're not exactly the same person. Um, 
both have roles in the Marvel Cinematic Universe right now, so the plot thickens. But anyway, um, how do we not get hit there? I want to preserve this. Never mind. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of like other Hollywood actresses who can choose any role they want, uh, and and like pr primarily only do stuff that's like good. I don't know, Vera Farmiga or something like that. Either way, the point is. Maybe Anne Hathaway fits that bill now. It's come a long way since the Princess Diaries 2. What? This was just... that It just ended? That's lovely. A bomb will probably pay for itself if we can get one. But you know what? Just spend three cents. Get the heck out of here. I think we're, we're ready to fight greed. Still like a bomb, but that's okay. Uh, I wonder if that's what Hold the Door does. Keeps the... Oh, maybe it keeps the... Dad, Mega Satan door open. I will also say, ooh, nice. That by not liking Bad Santa 2, you really do, I, I recognize this 100%. I've opened myself up to the idea like, oh, what, was the movie too offensive for you? No, it's like, I I say offensive things all the time. Um, some, sometimes intentionally and sometimes not, but I... You know, I, I I like to think, and I'm not saying I'm better than the collective talent, you know, at work on Bad Santa 2. However, you tr I try to make it, like, clever. You know, the joke can't just be... You can't say that! The joke's gotta be, like, it's funny, and it's funny enough that he's okay with making himself look like a, a bad person, sort of. You can't just be like, Man, did you... Put a stick of butter up your butt because your farts smell like popcorn. You know, that's just... That's just... Wafer thin... Humor, like... Either way. Christina Hendricks from Mad Men is in that movie. She plays a... A charity owner... Who is married to a jerk. She sleeps with Billy Bob Thornton... In like two seconds. And... Uh, uh, I... Not, I'm not trying to be, you know, sex negative here at all. I know the first reaction whenever you talk about stuff like this, you know, maybe her and her husband are in an open marriage. Now they're both cheating on each other is the thing. They're terrible people. But, like, Billy Bob Thornton has done nothing in this movie to, to warrant anybody having a good opinion of him. Like, he is drunk all the time while working as a charity. He beats up another Santa. Just, just to be a jerk, basically, and then also because that Santa may or may not um, be a pedophile. But again, it's just something that the movie is like not really interested in exploring at all. It's more just like Billy Bob Thornton's gonna punch him in the head. Anyway, um, she takes him to an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting where he proceeds to just not exhibit any character growth at all, which I understand is part of the bad Santa formula that he's never gonna change. Um, and then after it, he's like, I'd really like to, you know, put my straw in your tang. And she goes, oh, that's gross. Get out of the car. And then ten minutes later, she drives up and goes, actually, let's do it. And then he just has intercourse with her in an alley. It's it's completely unearned, both from a romantic sense and from a, from a cinematic sense. And if you're going to NL, that's so naive. That's how the world works. No, it's not! Christina Hendricks is not gonna go around having butt intercourse with a homeless alcoholic dude in an alley in the buck naked in the middle of the Chicago winter. And this is where people go, it's just a movie. No, but the movie has to make sense and play by rules that have any coherence whatsoever. That's so, what, like, the first bad Santa is like. This guy is begrudgingly, he has a heart, despite being terrible. The second bad Santa is like, here's three sociopaths. Special shopkeepers, heck yeah. Anyway. I, was, I don't even want to talk about what they do to the the kid from the first bad Santa in Bad Santa 2. They gave him like a frontal lobotomy or something like that. Anyway. Don't watch Bad Santa 2. Watch Live Free or Die Hard instead. Which are both like... Exactly okay. <laughs> well, no, one of them is okay, one of them is terrible. Anyway, bit of a shorter episode today, but thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We, we accomplished something important. We unlocked Lilith and we donated a lot of money. If you did enjoy it, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.